In this last video on the language class series, we're talking about the JavaScript that went into our contact us form. So if a user clicks into the name field right here, uh, the value is set to an empty string. And if they click away, then it comes back. And same thing with the message. If they click in there, uh, we set the value to an empty string. And then if they click away, we set it back to the default value. So what we're checking for here is if when they click into the name field, if the value here is set to the default value, then we're going to set it to an empty string. And when they click away, if the value is set to an empty string, then we're going to put back the default value. But if they put a name in here and then we click away, well, that value is not set to an empty string or the default value, so we're going to leave the name there. And the same thing with the message. When they uh, go away, which is a which is the fade event, um, it's not set to an empty string and it's not the default value, so we leave the message there. Some other JavaScript that's going on here is um, when they click the submit button. So we're going to do some um, client side validation before that um, submit event can return true and the form can be submitted. And lastly, we have um, when they change the select here to French. Um, we're doing some Ajax here, which is um, translating everything on the page. And every time this is done, another Ajax event fires. And then we reload the contents of the page. So let's look at um, let's look at how that happened. So remember, inside our view header here, um, we included uh, jQuery right here on line 15. And if we go down to line 18, you'll see I have my main.js file. Okay. So we can take a look at the main.js file and we have all of our JavaScript wrapped inside the document ready function. So we just wait for our DOM to be totally loaded before um, we perform any actions. Inside my document ready function here, the first thing I'm doing is I'm declaring my global namespace variable. So I'm naming that window.com underscore domain and that is being set to itself but in the event that itself doesn't exist then it's being set to an empty object. Underneath that I have my key script variables and default name value that is set to um, we're grabbing the value from the um, sender name input field so you know in the beginning that is set to please enter your name and then we're doing the same thing with the text area sender message dot val that is grabbing this um, default value right here please enter your message and we're storing that in these two local variables. After that, we are um, just selecting um, the validation errors div, and then we're caching that inside a local variable called dollar sign validation errors. Um, because that, so because this was used in several different places um, in our script, we're just caching this and storing it in a local variable, and that's just going to help our script run a bit faster. And this dollar sign in front of it is just sort of um, a common way to cache a jQuery variable. It just gives other programmers a heads up that this is um, that we've cached a jQuery selector. So underneath that, we have our behavior to improve user experience. So, like I said before, um, if somebody uh, focuses in, so if they click into one of the inputs. And if that value was set to the default name value, then we set it to an empty string here. And when they um, when they leave that one, when they click out, um, if the value was set to an empty string and they didn't put in their name, then we're going to put that default name value back there, which is please enter your name. And the same thing is going on with the text area here. Um, I'm not going to explain this because um, it's exactly the same. So if we move down here, we'll see the JavaScript for our select box. And the first thing we're doing is we're selecting our select box. So and the way we're selecting it is we're using jQuery's attribute selectors. So you can see I have my select element right here, and I have name is equal to language. Now because um, we only have one select on the page, I could have just done this and just removed it all, but um, it's very possible in the future we have more select boxes on here and if we left it like this it would select all of them so I'm going to leave my attribute selector there and we are selecting that and we're looking for the um, change function so when somebody changes it then we are going to um, 
execute this function. So first thing I'm doing is um, in my window.com domain in my global namespace variable we are attaching on a language property and we're setting that to um, the value of the select box. So if they change to French then we're going to have French right here and we're going to store that in our language property. The next thing I want to talk about is the target URL. So when we're doing our Ajax request we are going to post this to a certain URL and I ran into a little bit of a problem here and I tried to think of a good way to solve it and I came up with this and the problem relates to um, the way CodeIgniter serves up URLs so we know that our contact form is accessible here at slash project slash ci2 slash my pages so they could be on this URL looking at our contact form but they could also be at just ci2 and because this is the default controller they could also be here so I wanted a way to dynamically grab the URL and be able to post it um, to the right place. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come back here and um, in a comment here you'll see that um, if we post it here and then we went um, to our default controller which is my pages and then we go to the method that we're posting to which is get language data and let's just post this in here. So if we submitted to right here, that would work just fine. Um, however, they might also be at uh, this page, which is um, we remove this stuff right here. So they're at CI2. And then if we just tack on um, get language data, well, this isn't going to work because it doesn't have my pages right here. So I wanted to do a check to see whether my pages um, was in there or not. Now I could have just hard coded a URL in here like for example this URL I could have just hard coded that into the URL but that wouldn't make this code very portable so if in the future um, you know it's not on localhost it's on abc.com or we sort of um, we make some other changes to our URL I just want to make it um, as portable as possible. So what I was able to come up with was um, using here window.location.pathName. So that is going um, that is going to get basically whatever is up here in the URL. So whether that's CI2 or CI2 slash my pages, um, it's going to grab all of that uh, without the um, trailing slash, I believe. And basically what I'm doing is I'm just checking if in that path name if my page is in there and if the way we check that is we have a string right here and then dot index of pass it my pages and if that's greater than negative one then we know that my pages was in the URL so what I'm going to return for the target URL is window.location.pathName and then concatenate on get language data because I know that my pages is already in in that path name and and if this wasn't the case, if there was no my pages there, then I know what their URL was like was like this, okay, slash ci2. And in that case, what I'm going to return to target URL is the path name and concatenate on my pages slash get language data. And I bit of did a bit of testing with this and it was working just fine. So um, that's as dynamic as a solution um, as I was able to come up with so far. So we can go down to our jQuery.ajax invocation right here and we have the type set to post. The data type is JSON so what this is referring to is what kind of response are you expecting back from the server. Are you going to get JSON back as a response? Are you going to get XML or HTML? We're going to put that right here and in this case we're getting JSON back and we have our target URL right there and data is the name value pairs that we're passing um, to the method that we're submitting to. So here we just have a language and then the value of that is this dot value. So um, you know in that select box it's either going to be English or French and we're just grabbing that and then we're sending that as the value and language is the name. And if that is if that Ajax um, request is successful then we're going to do this callback function. So we do success and then we put our callback function after that. Um, before we talk about that, 
let's just go over to the controller that this is being submitted to and see what's going on there so I'll go to my pages here and we have um, our method right here get language data this is where it's being submitted to so the first thing I'm doing is um, we have this input post language so we just posted to this um, method right here now whatever we posted we're going to store the language inside this user language variable and then we're um, loading in our language class again so um, contact form underscore in the language and then the language uh, we looked at this already and after that we're setting up um, our data array so basically what we're doing here is we're preparing all the JSON data and we're going to use JSON encode function on this associative array right here and what this is what this function is going to do is it's going to take the associative array and it's going to convert it to well-formed JSON and then we're going to echo the um, the well-formed JSON and that is going to give um, our JSON response um, to our Ajax function that called it so inside here we have title name message submit name value and we can see all of these um, inside our language file right here so contact form English so all the information that we um, need in our JSON object we're just grabbing that and we're putting it in our associative array and then um, just doing JSON code on it and then responding um, with JSON so if we go back to our main.js file here you'll see that um, if it was successful now we can do all of our stuff about translating the page and that's what's going on right here so the H1, oh, we're changing the text of that. Um, the table data cell with name, we're changing that to name. And we can see that uh, right here. So this is inside a table data cell. Same with this one. And we're updating those. And then our input with the type of submit. Uh, so this is our submit button, and we're changing the value to um, our new submit value. So submit is going to become a Sumetra in French. And the next thing, our sender name, we're just updating the values here. So no matter what you want to update, you just do that inside your callback function right there. And the last thing I'm doing is I'm updating um, our default value. So remember at the top here, uh, we, you know, when we first loaded the page, for example, maybe it was English. And we hear this was something like, please enter your name. Okay? I made a mess there, but yeah, originally that was please enter your name. So we store that in default name value, but once they've changed everything to French and they've let us know that they speak French, well, we're going to update this default name value, and that's what I did um, at the bottom of the callback function right here, just updating those default name values um, to something that's French. The last thing I want to talk about is the validation we're doing when the user clicks on the submit button, and that's happening right here. So what we're doing is we're grabbing the submit button here and when they click on that we're going to run this function and by default when someone clicks on it it's going to be sent um, an event and you can just put this in here um, I think it will be passed in anyways even if you don't put that there and then you can reference that um, inside your function you can see I use here event.preventDefault so let's see what happens here when they click on the submit button. Um, the first thing we're doing is uh, user language is set to, um, we're grabbing this global variable right here, window.com domain the language, and we're just storing that um, in a local variable right here. Um, actually, I don't think this was necessary because, like I said, this was global. This is a global uh, property, so uh, we could grab it from anywhere. But um, anyways, let's keep going here. So um, if the uh, sender name value was set to an empty string or the value of their name was set to the default value, um, well, that's not acceptable. They didn't put their name in there. So um, if it was English, then we're going to give them um, this error message, sorry, you must input your name. And here you'll see I'm, I'm doing dollar sign validation errors.html. And that relates to the top right here you see that we grabbed our validation errors div right here and then we cached it in this local variable 
So this is, um, if we go to our view right here, you'll remember at the bottom we had this div validation errors. So basically we're just grabbing this div right now and we're going to put the error message in it now. So let's go back down here. And we're grabbing that and we're setting the inner HTML to sorry you must input your name. And but if it was uh, if it wasn't English, then we know it's French. And then we just pass in the HTML and put the French message in there. The last thing we're doing is event dot prevent default. And I think this is basically the same as doing return false here. So um, on your uh, JavaScript, uh, in your JavaScript functions, um, for example, like a submit button, if on the event you put return false at the end, that is going to prevent the form from being submitted. But we can do it the jQuery way right here, which is um, event.preventDefault. And if we go down here, we have the validation for the message. And basically, this is exactly the same except for here we're checking that the message that they're sending um, is at least 10 characters. So if the value of that, and then we grab the length, if that's less than 10 characters, then we're not going to accept it. And then we're going to give them um, their error messages based on uh, what language is said here. Okay. And finally, we can go down to sender message right here. And I believe it's the same deal here, yeah. If um if that's set to the default message, well we're not gonna let them set the default message, which was like um please enter your message and we're gonna give them an error message of please write your message.